Hello everybody, my name is Ben and this is my first attempt at a YouTube video. I'm just using my webcam on my computer and um, PowerPoint and stuff like that. It's nothing too complicated, but I just wanted to get involved in the debate. I actually love um, YouTube. I love to hear what people have to say on, on things. And I think it can really help understanding. Um, so I'm going to be talking about what I really love and being a pastor living in East London, I'm going to be talking about Jesus and about my faith as a Christian and how it affects my life and how I believe it is the most amazing um, news in the universe. Um, as you may not agree with me, but that's debate, that's fine. Um, I suppose I get a bit frustrated sometimes by looking and listening to some people and um, you know, they, they describe what they think about Christianity or how they understand the gospel. And I just sit in there thinking on the other side of the screen going, that's not what I believe, that's not what the gospel is, um, or, or that's just not quite right. Ah, and I get frustrated. Um, which is fair enough, because I suppose if, if you're not discussing, if, if you're not able to debate, then um, people will always misunderstand. And I'm sure I must understand what other people think as well. Um, and that's why YouTube can um, help. So um, this is my first video, and in it I'm going to talk about two things that get me really, really excited that have shaped my life. One is um, the doctrine of sin, and one is the doctrine of um, holiness. Um, I'm, I'm only scraping the top of what these two things are about, but I, I just want to explain very basic detail why they're important to me and my faith and why they changed my life. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Please do um, comment if um, you've got any um, suggestions of how to improve the video or if you want to debate, that's fine. Um, if not, that's fine too. Don't worry. This is how many people see the gospel. They kind of imagine a scale and on that scale they put people who are very, very good at the top. You know, people like Mother Teresa or Gandhi, and they imagine that they are close to God because of the good things they've done in their lives, and we, and we want to be like them. And on the other end of the spectrum, we put people who are very, very bad, people like Charles Manson, Adolf Hitler, and Pol Pot. And um, we say, those guys are irredeemable, as close to being Satan themselves. You know, there's nothing good in them whatsoever. And on this scale, we put ourselves smack bang in the middle, and we say, we're okay. You know, We're not as bad as we could be. But we've got a lot of improving to do. We want to become better people. Well, the truth is, we don't just do this with, you know, with with extremes. We do this with with the people we work with, with the people we go to church with, the people we live with, the people we we live next door to. You know, we say things like, "I'm I'm glad I'm not like him. I'm glad I'm not like her. I wish I could be a little bit more like that person." And the aim is, we want to become better people and not become like those bad people. But then Jesus comes in on the picture. And for Christians, Jesus is the ultimate example of how we should live. He's not just very good, he's perfect. I mean, he's God himself, isn't he? And, and the thing is, we, we hear about his stories about how he washed the disciples' feet, how he loved sinners, ate with tax collectors and sinners, how he died on a cross. And we imagine that what Jesus came to do was ultimately was to reach down to us and to lift us up and give us that encouragement and that challenge and that show us that love we need to become more like him. And we imagine that's what the gospel is, that Jesus is spurring us on because he loves us, because he can see good in us and he wants to pull that potential out. You know, this for many people has been life-changing, this message, and I don't want to belittle it, and I'm glad that this has inspired many people, but actually that's not the gospel. You know, what the gospel says is far deeper, far more profound, and far more amazing than that. See, as I've been a Christian, as I've learnt about Jesus, as I've spent time meditating upon him and praying and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal him to me, I, I've seen him to become more and more and more amazing, more and more and more beautiful. His love is far more amazing than I ever imagined 10 years ago when I first got saved. He's just so beautiful and I realize it's, he's on a completely different spectrum to everything else. You know, as I look at him, I realize it's not about comparing myself to other people so much. It's not about being very good, very bad, or even okay. You know, Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. He says, it's about comparing ourselves to him and saying, what is he like? See, it's not about being good or bad. It's about holiness. It's about being holy. And what holy means is other, set apart, different. And Jesus is so different to us when it comes to morality. He is holy. He is untouchable. And we're on completely different scales. And the more I think of his holiness, his goodness, his gloriousness, his beauty, the more I see 
you know, the sin in my own heart, I realize actually how bad I am and how bad I can be. I, 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 as I see Jesus' um, selflessness, I see my selfishness. As I see Jesus' humility, I see my pride. As I see Jesus' forgiveness, I see my anger and hatred. You know, and it just gets scarier and scarier. But the amazing thing is, as I understand this, as I understand how what, what this gap is like between us and God, and the Bible says that that gap is is as far as the east is from the west. You know, it's it's you know, unfathomable distance. But the gospel is that God, in His love, reaches down that unfathomable unfathomable distance and pulls us out and saves us and rescues us. Not because of what we've done or because of what we are or because we deserve it, but because He loves us. And the amazing thing is, the reason why these two doctrines, holiness and sin, are so important is because without both of them, we don't really understand the depth of God's love for us. If I know how sinful I am, and know how holy Jesus is, yet know and believe in my heart that he died to rescue me, I can say, Lord, you must love me more than I ever imagined, because you would do that for me. So there we go, my first video. Um, I hope you found that helpful. Um, please feel free to comment if you want, and if you don't, that's absolutely fine. Um, anyway, this is me. Goodbye, and God bless.